Nico, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you guys for having me. Well, it's awesome that we can have you share your testimony. First question is, where were you born? Hello, everybody. My name is Nico, and I was born in Italy in a small town in the south near Rome. Awesome. And uh, I grew up in England. I lived in Germany, in Denmark, a little bit in Finland, and I live in the U.S. from 14 years now. What you're known for or what you when you were in a rock band was bass guitar. So did you just yeah. always like bass or how did you get into that? I got into bass because it's funny. Uh, there were not so many musicians in the, in the village I was born. Mm -hmm. And there were everyone played drums or guitar. And <laughs> I was not that good with the guitar. So I, no one wanted to play the bass and I just <laughs> grabbed the bass. And I, I just want to say that I used music to travel. Mm -hmm. I used music for money. I used music to attract people, mm -hmm. attract girls. And uh, I was always rejected when I was young. Later mm -hmm. on, I realized that I was rejecting everyone. So I used music to prove to my parents and everyone else that I was worth doing something in life. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I started playing in Italy with the bands and things were going well. At some point, I moved to England with only 100 euros. I didn't know a word of English, I just wanted to play to the next level yeah. band. I started playing industrial metal, mm. start getting into heavy music. You know, those thoughts in my head were telling me, uh, if you play heavy music, you will be a man. Mm. Oh. You know, so I had the shift happening from being a youth, a young guy, to become a man, and that music was a part of it. Mm. Yeah. I was part of the deception. I always played heavy music, yep. and mm -hmm. I got into heavier and heavier and heavier music while doing it. I was sucked in, and I didn't even realize it. In fact, when I moved in the U.S. 14 years ago, I started with uh, an industrial band that was very evil. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the lyrics that well. My English was not that well, but I can tell it was very evil. Mm -hmm. I remember... During rehearsal, I could feel the darkness entering the room. Mm. I could feel the spiritual world entering the physical world while playing mm. it. Wow. Yeah. I could see people getting angry while we were playing and changing their the way they are interacting with life, mm -hmm. just listening to our music. Mm -hmm. I was doing yoga and I was crippled. Mm -hmm. I could barely walk for yeah. many years. I had huge pain in my back. I had couple of discs moved out of place and mm. but when I go on stage I can jump like an animal wow. so people will start asking me this question how do you do it yeah. you, you know people almost have to carry you on stage but now you can play <laughs> and my question was always the same it's like hey man I don't know I feel I'm possessed mm. yeah yeah well I thought I was joking in my mind and mm. I thought it was cool yeah, yeah. so Basically, I ended up playing with the big bands. I don't want to say the names now, but probably you guys mm -hmm. know those bands. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up playing in super groups too, with mm -hmm. the biggest musician in the world. Mm -hmm. oh. And uh, I'm not proud anymore about it, but mm -hmm. uh, it's part of my testimony. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I realized that even playing in those bands, I didn't accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I wanted to uh, be loved. Mm -hmm. And basically what I did, I created an idol out of myself. So the people that loved me, they loved the idea that I created it. They didn't love my heart. Yeah. So there was always a void into my heart that I needed to fill with the drugs, with the alcohol, with the more and more fame, more and more uh, money or girls, you know, anything that came my way. Mm -hmm. And the uh, more I was living that way and more depression came in and more suicidal thoughts came in. Mm -hmm. I remember I got so bad at some point that I was calling my mom and telling my mom, you should do drugs, you're missing out. Mm. Mm. Wow. I was persecuting Christians. I was telling people, you're insane to believe in a book. You know, Jesus was probably drugging people. Mm. That's why they were aware of the spiritual world. I was that kind of guy. Oh. Wow. Wow. So yeah. there was nothing good about me, but in my head, I was the goodest guy in the world. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So you were directly opposing Christianity at that time and God. You were just... Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was into New Age. I believed there was a higher form of energy. Mm. I didn't believe in Jesus. I believed Jesus was a prophet or something like yeah. that, but yeah. 
taking psychedelics because yeah. I was doing lots of psychedelics. I ended yeah. up believing that Jesus itself was a mushroom. Yeah. Wow. Started to believe I was a god. Yeah. But later on, Jesus proved to me the opposite. He was yeah. always with me, helping me. Yeah. Amen. And actually, yeah. I could see in vision, but I want to get there. Uh, so basically, I was into herbs, healthy lifestyle. I was vegan for almost 14 years. Mm. Wow. Uh, I was doing yoga regularly because I was trapped. I was in jail without doing mm. all of those things. I couldn't live anymore. Yeah. I was doing probably 10 gram to 20 or pot a day by wow. eating it or smoking it. I was uh, I needed to drink a six pack just to get out of my apartment to be able to speak to people because wow. there was a fear of men there. Yeah. You know, and uh, this is a part of new age. It's kind of like uh, we are out of deceiving ourselves because we are filled with the pride. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to prove that we are wrong, so we mm -hmm. are carrying on mm -hmm. uh, giving food to the lie yeah. to prove that other people are wrong, you know. And basically, we are ending up in this spiral that you're going to always search more and more, more and more knowledge that will lead you to nothing. Mm -hmm. I never had any answers, you know. So mm -hmm. this is the kind of new age I know that people into new age, basically, they, they are searching constantly. Yeah. And now I can see everything looking back. It's like... I can see how much sadness I, I had in my heart. I can see how deceived I was and mm. also I was deceiving other people yeah. mm -hmm. because by lying to myself, I didn't want to admit that I was deceived. Mm. I wanted to make people in my own image. That's what J Satan does, right? Yeah. God mm. created us in his own image, but now I'm playing to be a God and trying to make people in my own image. And in reality, I'm crippled. I can barely walk. I cannot function without drugs or alcohol. Mm -hmm. I cannot function if I don't do those things that are becoming my cage every day, you mm -hmm. know, and there is no freedom. There were moments before going to stage that we had to drink a lot yeah. just to keep the fear tamed, mm -hmm. all the anxieties and all of those. So we use the alcohol and drugs. By the time we go on stage, we are we are transitioning to somewhere else. We, mm. Basically, do you know how many times I was so drunk that I blacked out? Mm. And next day I had to ask my friend, what happened last yeah. night? And they were yeah. telling me the same thing. Hey man, you got crazy, but that was funny. Mm. Oh. So now yeah. I know what happened. Basically, demons want us to lose the control so yeah. they can take yep. over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty much what happened on stage. Uh, when I had an encounter with Jesus, I was so shocked mm. because he showed me everything. He showed me what the stage really is. Yeah. Basically, you are my sister, you're my brother, but by going on the stage, I put myself in a higher level than mm. you, mm. which yeah. you you are made in image of God, right? Mm. So when I go on the stage, I'm mocking God. Mm. Mm. I'm yeah. mocking the image of God. I want to be a God, right? And that's what Satan work is. Yeah. Mm. So... Also, by giving the demons the possibility to spiritually control in those frequencies, which is very powerful, mm. I'm allowing people to to get possessed, actually. Mm. We, we become like a priest of darkness. And we mm. are, uh, when he showed me the mosh pit, that was like, I clicked so much in my head, like the pit. We are sending demons to the pit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so when yeah. people were getting that crazy, it's because demons are taking over and they want to recreate hell on earth. Mm. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And then everything else clicked on me. It's like they are hurting the body of Christ by being aggressive mm. one another, right? Jesus said, love one another, but they are like mm. uh, trying yeah. to kill each other, yeah. you know? And it, it, it is just crazy what Jesus showed me. And I could see the, in my spirit the number all the people I deceived with the music mm. since I started to play and how many people wanted to be like me. Mm. Mm. Yep, exactly. that I, I, I was on my knee crying and begging for mercy and I said, Lord, I'm never going to play again. You gave me a gift and I used the gift against you. I'm never going to play again. And mm. after seven months, I was with the, the last reformation in New Hampshire uh, in a tent revival. And uh, people were asking me to play on the stage three times. And I mm -hmm. said, no, three times. And they were asking me, why you don't want to play? I said, I don't want to be prideful anymore. Mm -hmm. 
that same day we went outside for outreach to pray for people and we ended up in a music store. And my friend Brandon was giving me a guitar after another. He wanted to see how I play, so I started playing acoustic guitar. Mm. And those guitars were getting better and better and more expensive. Mm. At some point, they gave me this beautiful guitar. It's like a Taylor guitar. I didn't mm. even want to look at it. It was like almost $2,000 guitar. Wow. And I told him, just take it back. Even if I had money, I would never pay this much for this guitar. Mm. When we left the store, I was in a parking lot and I was laughing. I was literally laughing and said, God, if you wanted me to play, give me that guitar. <laughs> if you wanted me to play again, give me that guitar. Those were the words I said. Mm. In the morning, I woke up with a guitar case next to my bed. Oh. <laughs> I opened the case and there was that exactly guitar. So huh? I closed the case. I tried to sleep again, but I would start trembling, <laughs> trembling and crying. So I open again the case and I see the guitar and I see a note. And on the note, there is, my son, I give you this guitar so you can use the gift I gave you. Mm. Play for me. And it was mm. signed, God. Wow. At that point, I just broke down in tears for half hour and I was trembling. The presence of God was so powerful. Wow. My, my friend Valen came to the room and that was his guitar. Valen used to be a drug dealer and he gave his life to Jesus a couple of years ago. And the Lord took everything away from him. The mm -hmm. guitar was the last thing that he had. Wow. So that night, the Lord convicted him to give me his guitar. Wow. <laughs> wow. And he said, I cried the whole night because I didn't want to give you my guitar and I wanted to make sure that's God. <laughs> and he said, the Lord told me to write you a note also. And when I told him, you don't know where I was yesterday, don't you? He said, no, where you were. So that was in the store and I prayed for this exactly guitar. He started oh. crying like a baby too. <laughs> wow. That's so we, we were all trying for three days, you know, because mm. he, he realized that it was God telling him to give me the guitar. Mm. And I realized that my prayer was answered. Mm -hmm. So all the people that witnessed the miracle were trying too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I cannot count the miracles and the blessing I received since mm. I gave up everything for to follow him and yeah. to do the will of the Father. and. Now I'm realizing more and more that the reason why God made us mm. is to do His will. Amen. He sent us to this world to do only His will. Mm -hmm. And we take life for granted. And we believe that we are in this world to... Uh, I don't even know how to explain because I don't like anything from this world anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, we believe that we are in this world to have fun, to, to mm -hmm. experience the worldly thing while... Mm -hmm. We are here to save souls, to prevent our yeah. brother and sister to perish in hell. Remember, I use the music just to attract people, which yeah. means I need a love. I need mm -hmm. to be loved, right? Yeah. And that was just a tool I used in a wrong way. So mm -hmm. doesn't mean that I was happy. Yeah. So if you think about how many people are unhappy and they know inside of them that they are unhappy, mm -hmm. they are just hiding it. So when I approach people now, the first thing come to my mind is what led Jesus to heal the sick was compassion. Mm. In the scripture, we find all the times like what moved Jesus was compassion and he healed all of them. Yeah. So when I approach people, the first thing that is, uh, the Lord is showing me what people are missing in their heart, in their life. Mm -hmm. He gave me a word of knowledge. So when, it's, 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 uh, it's interesting because I know already the pain they have in the body or anything they need and and also Jesus said that we should walk to demonstrate the power mm. so can you imagine before I encountered Jesus I was in a band if somebody came to me and showed me the power of God in the front mm. of my eyes I would have left everything immediately mm. it took me a long time because I never seen that I was deceived I, I come from Catholic background and I never seen the power. Mm -hmm. I was asking my parents and my aunts and uncles It's like what are those miracles we read in the Bible and they were telling me "Hey, Jesus used to do them. He died mm -hmm. So I ended up believing that this is a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I approach young people I heal them Jesus healed them through me mm -hmm. uh, I give them a word of knowledge and they immediately realize it's God speaking and not me mm -hmm. So they start to understand it Jesus is real, you know. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. So what was that? What was the turning point uh, where you actually gave your life to God? <laughs> what did that look like? What was that transition? Um, 
uh, two years ago, I started preaching this kind of weird stuff to people. I didn't even know what I was saying, but <laughs> I was trying to tell people that pride is an infection of our spirit, mm. and all the other symptoms symptoms are attached to pride. Then I was telling them, when you admit to yourself that you're prideful, this pride is going to leave you. Mm. I didn't know I was preaching repentance in a wrong way, but I was start preaching repentance. The Lord was leading me to approaching people and learn how to preach yeah. and uh, there were several things that happened that are very strange example i had vision of me reading the bible over and over and i was rejecting those visions i was like wow what is that book you know i i will read when i'm old but no now i know yeah. i will get trapped in this yeah. religion stuff and <laughs> i don't want to have nothing to do with it you just get a vision in the middle of the day? About yeah, that? vision. One day I remember I was led to fast for one day. Mm -hmm. So I sit in the middle of the room fasting and my roommate said, what are you doing? He's like, I'm fasting. Fasting is good for you. And I wanted to start listening to the voice. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I wanted to start listening to the voice. Was that part and, of the uh, new age thing to fast? or No, I was not it, doing yeah. for new age or any religion. Okay. I was just led to fast for one day. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know why. And that night... I had a powerful vision. Hmm. I had a vision of myself when I was seven, eight years old that I was speaking to God the night before I go to bed and I could feel and hear the sound of my tears hitting the pillow. Hmm. And I was so in shock. I was like, whoa, I was speaking to God. Hmm. And I was in my bed crippled. I could barely walk. So hmm. that night was like, whoa, let me try to, to speak to God again. I mean, I was speaking when I was young. Hmm. That, that vision was so real, so alive, that convinced me to speak to God. So after 40 years, I'm speaking to God now, and what I said, I said, God, if you're real, why don't you take me out of this bed? Why I'm not walking? And next day, I'm just walking like a normal guy. <laughs> and all of my friends are telling me, well, how did you make this, how this happened? And... I didn't know what to tell them. I just told them, hey, I had a dream. Aliens were performing a surgery in my back. Mm. <laughs> I was on drugs, so I didn't know what to tell them. I couldn't yeah. connect little prayer for the healing, right? Mm. So those, those visions were going on and on. And I remember I met a guy 14 years ago. I was working with this guy fixing refrigerators, and I got fired, of course, because I was on drugs. Mm. And uh, for 10 years, I never seen this guy again. After 10 years, he called me and he telling me, hey, bro, I want to meet you. I have something to tell you. I go, right, let's meet. We made it up and he told me, I just came out of jail. Mm. I used to be on crystal meth and I need your help. Mm. I need you to help me out to stay away from crystal meth. And I will give you a free room in my house. I was like, all right. <laughs> I moved in in his house. And uh, what I did the whole day was just like, yelling at this guy if you even think about crystal meth hmm. i'm just yelling at him you're, you're crazy you're not gonna do meth anymore i love you <laughs> what i was doing i was giving him all of my drug of choice mm. any other drug psychedelic marijuana because wow. i thought these were good things hmm. those drugs opened my mind expanded my consciousness you know these were the new age uh, yeah. you know the deception is mm -hmm. Uh, I thought those drugs were helping me in life, this, this, those idols, basically. That, mm -hmm. That's what they are, idols. I thought marijuana was taming the pain in my back, which is true, but it's kind of like we give food to demons inside of us. Mm -hmm. And when we stop giving that food, they are tormenting us with the pain and stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I started dragging my friend, believing that I was doing a good thing. Mm -hmm. After a year of doing drugs, we became so skinny, we didn't even care about food anymore. We were just drinking so much and smoking and doing every kind of drugs to imagine, but not crystal meth. So I keep my promise and I'm a good person. <laughs> In my mind, I'm a good guy. <laughs> so I remember this day, it's Sunday, he doesn't go to work. And as soon as we wake up, it was very early, we start drinking, uh, smoking lots of pot, like killing ourselves. Like uh, around noon, 1 p.m., we couldn't move and we start eating magic mushroom. Mm. Then in order to get some energy, we were doing cocaine. Mm. Then we smoked DMT, which is like a very powerful psychedelic. So you can imagine by the end of the night, we are totally fried that we can't do any drugs anymore because we are, 
we cannot move anymore. I'm on one couch, my roommate is in the other couch, and we can't even talk to each other because mm. we are totally gone. Oh. So th- this guy, I don't know, we managed to go to the bathroom. He decided to go to the bathroom. And he never came back to the room. And then when my testimony starts, because the same voice I heard that told me I was praying when I was little, start telling me now to go to the bathroom. I start giving me vision of my roommate in the bathroom in the floor. I could see him laying on the floor, full of blood. Mm. I didn't know how to move, but I wanted to obey that voice. And as soon as I let my foot touch in the ground, I was totally sober. Mm. Now I'm totally sober, like I never done drugs. I, I can walk, I can go to the bathroom, and on the way to the bathroom, I already know what I'm gonna find. Mm-hmm. And there it is, the body of my roommate he, he's totally unconscious. His feet were turning blue. His lips were like purple. His body was tidied out and he was covered in blood. Yeah. Basically, he was sitting in the bathroom and he passed it out and he hit his head in the floor. Mm-hmm. And I don't know for how many hours his body was, you know, crumbled in the, in, in the ground so he couldn't breathe. Mm-hmm. When I look at his body, I finally realized that I'm not a good person. Mm. Mm. All, all, all the feeling were, were, it's like somebody stabbed my heart with love. Mm. And now I can start feeling love and I have love for my roommate and this guy is dead and I killed him. Mm. Now I can see I'm not a good person. I, I didn't help him. I spent his money to kill this guy. Mm. I spent his own money to buy drugs, to drug him. Mm. I didn't keep the promise. This guy came out of jail and he wanted to have a better life and he trusted me. Mm-hmm. He put his life in my hand and what I did is killing him. Mm-hmm. And I can see finally for the first time that I'm a sinner. Mm-hmm. So now I want to make it up and I try to reanimate him. I try to pump his heart, slapping him. Mm-hmm. And I still remember the moment of his lifeless body. He didn't come back. I was, mm-hmm. I was struggling so much to bring him up. He didn't come back. I think after 20 minutes, minute after half hour, I start hear the same voice again. It's like, put some water on his neck. Mm. So I, I was so panicking that I didn't even have water in my two fingers. I just touch his neck and this guy all of a sudden comes back from me. Mm. I believe he was dead. He just <gasps> start breathing and looking at me. And at that point, mm. I feel this love I never felt coming out of me. I never loved anybody like this. I just grab his head. I'm hugging him. I start crying. And then while I'm looking at him, I said, bro, this is my fault. I'm so sorry. We're going to stop doing drugs right now. You just came back from the dead. This is my fault. And I'm so sorry. And mm. there was so much love coming out of me. Mm. That he was embarrassed. I was hugging him like, <laughs> you know, and he was so uncomfortable. They look yeah. at me and tell me, Shut up, I just had the blood pressure. <laughs> I know myself, I used to do heroin and I had the blood pressure. At that point, I got very upset because I was struggling for hours to to get to the bathroom mm-hmm. and to see, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time I passed, passed away and uh, this guy was dead in the floor and I don't know mm-hmm. how to explain to him. I, don't, I have no words to explain to this guy what happened and I just tell him, look, your feet are still blue. You're covered in blood. You don't know what happened, but you just came back from the dead. Mm-hmm. You were dead, and as as I yelled at him, he was start shaking. Mm. I I believe I gave him seizure. Mm. But now later on, I realized he was manifesting. Yeah. Mm. You know. Yeah. So he refused me to call the amb- an ambulance, and I spent the whole night supervising him. Because now I have this much love for everybody. I don't know what happened to me. Mm-hmm. My heart is so open to love. And I want to love this guy. I finally want to take care of him for real. Mm. And he's on the couch. And I supervise him the whole night. Because I was afraid that he had a concussion. Mm. Mm. Next, next day he goes back to work. He comes back. The day after we of course forget everything. We mm. go and buy more drugs. Mm. On the way to the supermarket to buy beers. I left him to pay for those beers and I went outside to pick cigarettes in the floor, in the ground, to look how messed up I was, to mix with the drugs. Mm. And uh, this guy doesn't come out. 
I'm waiting 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and all of a sudden I see him walking very slow. Mm. And I start yelling at him. He's like, why, why do you make me wait? What did you do? He said, I passed it out. Then I said, did you eat head first? He said, no, he was so embarrassed for two nights ago that he didn't want to tell me he hit head first. Mm. So when he come out and they see me, as soon as he gets closer to me, he couldn't handle being around me. Mm-hmm. So he sat on the wall. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit right here right now because I, I feel tired. Mm. And he blacks out. Mm. As he blacks out, I try to reanimate him, but he doesn't, doesn't wake up. So now I have all the people looking at us, and I don't want those people to call cops on me because <laughs> this guy's dying in my hand. You know, that's how it looked like. Mm. And I start yelling, call an ambulance, call an ambulance. This guy wakes up out of the blue and tells me, don't call any ambulance. I'm doing just fine. Huh. As soon as I turn my head and I yell at him with authority again, this this guy starts trembling. Huh. Mm. So I don't know what happened. I think I'm giving him seizure again and I start getting confused. But in reality, it's like he was manifesting again. Mm. And those demons, for some reason, were afraid of me. Mm. I didn't even know I already... The Lord probably already anointed me to do something and I didn't know. Mm. So yeah. what happened is that on the way back home, uh, I decided to do drugs in my home, mm-hmm. and uh, I remember me. I start I start smoking the first joint, and this random video on YouTube popped to my face like the light was coming out of <laughs> the screen of the computer, and something told me, "Look at it, look at it," and, and it was like, "Yoga is dangerous." Wow, I was shocked that yoga is dangerous. <laughs> I, I've just finished to do yoga, you know, and. I start watching testimony after testimony after testimony. I couldn't stop all people getting possessed by doing yoga. Yeah. And this is a total new world for me. I was in shock looking testimony. I think I spent one week wow. just looking at testimonial people in yoga. I ended up watching rituals in India about Hinduism. And the Lord opened my spiritual eyes so much that I could see demons entering people. Mm-hmm. You know, and start prophesizing in a demonic way. I could see everything you now. My my spiritual eyes are so open. That... Mm. So my roommate was coming back home and he was mocking me. He was telling me, stop watching this video because you're losing your mind and this is my house. You know, I need to use the computer too. But I couldn't stop. Mm. I was just hiding from him. And as soon as he go to sleep, I'm all the night watching those testimony. Mm. I remember all of a sudden he shifted those testimony to deliverance. Mm. Mm. Now those video deliverance are popping to my face in baptism and people speaking in tongue. And as soon as I hear people speaking in tongue, I'm, I'm crying like a baby. I cannot mm. stop. Mm. So I'm, I'm searching people speaking in tongue all over the Internet. And I found lots of video about deliverance, uh, repentance. Mm. Uh, the Lord was ministering me through YouTube. Mm. Wow. God. When I understood everything, all the process, I feel this wind coming into the room like shoo, and in less than one second, now I know all the truth. Mm. All the past that was missing in my life now entered my heart. Mm. I, God is right there looking at me. His presence in the room is so powerful that I can't stop trembling. Mm. I cannot breathe. I fell on my knee and all I could say is, like, oh, you're real. You mm. died for me and, and now you're forgiving me. And, mm. and I could say this over and over. I, the only word I could say, and I was crying and begging him for mercy. And this is when he gave me all the vision, wow. all, the, all the sin I ever done since I was young. And I was repenting one by one, one by one, one by one. Oh. That point, you know, my roommate came back home. But this time I cannot stop crying. Yeah. It was quite embarrassing because we are, you know, heavy metal player. We never <laughs> cry. We are tough men. Yeah. Yeah. But now we come back home and I cannot hold the tears. And ah, I'm <laughs> He sit next to me and look at me and he start laughing at me. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what to do, but something pushed my head to turn and look at him. And as soon as I look his eyes, I see something behind his eye try to hide from me. This is crazy because I know I see now demons and I know in my spirit that they know that I saw them and happened so fast that <gasps> I'm in shock and all of a sudden I command them to leave. Wow. I saw you. You're going to leave my roommate right now. You cannot live inside of him anymore. You're going to leave right now with this boldness I never had. Mm. And there was also fear trying to cripple in. 
the fear was telling me, your roommate is going to think that you're totally insane now. Mm -hmm. This was the voice of the devil. So that yeah. night I learned how to discern both voices. Yeah. And all of a sudden I didn't stop doing it. My roommate became so tight like a statue. After 10 minutes, he opened his mouth, and said, this huge scream, and we saw something came out of his mouth, and all of a sudden, quiet. Mm -hmm. And we both looked at each other in shock, and he was so shocked. Mm -hmm. As soon as I touched him, he speak in to his tongue exploded. He's like, shut up, shut up, shut up, At that point, I just jumped out of the chair, I started yelling, hallelujah, Lord, <laughs> this is what you're going to do now, take my life right now. I'm mm -hmm. giving you my life right now. This is going to do until I, I feel my last breath. Mm -hmm. And my roommate was so shocked. He looked at me and was like, this word is not what seems to be. This word is crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, hallelujah, you opened his eyes right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, Praise God. God. Yeah, so since the day he showed me my shirts with skull were cursing my brother, so I threw away all the shirt. He told me, why are you piercing my body? I was already crucified once. And mm -hmm. I took all the rings away from my face. Mm -hmm. I was full of piercing. Mm -hmm. um, I remember in my spirit, I knew I had to give up all the music. Mm -hmm. So I tried to play a worship music as soon as I played that song. I, I fell on the ground with my knee. I turned my head and I see the cross right to my head. Mm -hmm. The craziest thing I ever seen is that I was on the cross, and the shape of the corners was roundish. I could see the color, and on the top corner, the color was uh, brownish. There was the blood, and mm. the craziest thing I could even smell it. And that day, I thought I was going to die. Mm. I was just on my knee. I could barely breathe, and <gasps> uh, 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 the, the tears were coming out. So mm. in a way, I never cried, and this listed three, four hours. Wow. And I think that day the Lord delivered me from lots of demons. Mm. I used to smoke pot and I was telling people my excuse was because pot was taking back mm. pain away. So for me, I pot became yeah. an idol. Mm. And we know that God hates Amen. idols. Amen. So he's the only healer. He's the only savior, right? Mm. He's the only one who will give you a revelation. And I replaced all of those things that God wanted to give me with the pot, with the drugs, with the alcohol, with the farm. It's like if I have a pain, I go to the doctor and I put all of my trust on him. Mm. And I take the medicine that he gave me, which will take a pain away for a uh, for few yeah. hours. Then I need more and more. But I see healing now every day. Jesus is healing people every day. Today we were at a Walmart and in 10 minutes, five people Praise got healed. God. Knee pain, back pain, heart surgery, mm. you know, heart failures and... Uh, we see all kind of healing, and he's the only one who can do this. Amen. So Satan knows very well how to grieve the spirit of mm -hmm. God. You know, and God loves us so much that when we do something like that, we are breaking his heart. Mm -hmm. And then Satan makes us believe that God hates us. In reality, God is just stretching his hand to try and, you know, to try and tell us something yeah. so we can come back to him. Yeah. But we are so deceived, like you said, that we cannot see. That's why Jesus said, I came for the broken heart. We need to have a relationship with him. Amen. Otherwise, it doesn't work. You know, he, uh, in the beginning, he created man and he was walking in the garden with the man. Amen. That's what he wants from us. He wants to walk with us again mm -hmm. into the garden of eternal life. Mm -hmm. And if we don't understand what he meant by that, we will never understand who God really is. Exactly. So uh, basically, I had back pain until a year I got saved. Mm. He healed me three months ago, but I never stopped walking with him because he was testing my faith. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, why? Because I believed if he healed me right on the spot, I would fall back on the same mm. kind of life. Yeah. And what he told me is amazing because you remember I was vegan, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The reason why I was vegan, because I made a covenant with this girl. He showed me later because I didn't know I made a covenant. So this girl told me, uh, you know, people who eat meat turn me off. So if you want to be my boyfriend, you're going to stop eating meat. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, sure. So I made a covenant with her. I became vegan because of her, not because of the desire in my heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was in prayer. I was fasting and said, Lord, why you don't take the pain away from me? You are healing people through my hand, but I still have the back pain. And they said, eat meat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Eat meat. For weeks, I could eat meat. Mm -hmm. And it was so hard for me. It's like, 
what does that mean? Yeah. And bam, the revelation came to my mind and they show me why I had to admit. And one day I just take a piece of chicken. It's like, <laughs> all right, Lord, this is a covenant I made to you. I'm removing all the covenant I made with anyone consciously and unconsciously. As soon as I hit the piece of meat, I just boil on tears. Wow. I think it was delivering me. But the pain was still there and I was still struggling. It's like, why the pain is still there? As I read the Bible, <laughs> this verse popped to my face. Like, is this a shame for a man to cover his head? It's like, why well, I had to cut my hair. <laughs> How long so was your I immediately, hair? My hair was long as yours, even wow. longer than yours. There you go. That's great. I always said long hairs, yeah. <laughs> so I. I went to the room, I called my friends, like, hey, I'm cutting my hair right now. I'm renounced about all the covenant I made with the lust, with the shame, with the every, uh, you know, it reminded me why I started grooming my hair in the first place. Mm. Because I want to have girls, I wanted to cover my face because the enemy made me look ugly. Mm. When I looked to myself in the mirror, I looked ugly, mm. unless I was doing drugs, you know. Mm. Uh, so I, I cut my hair and I renounced all of those things. And guess what? The pain was slowly leaving me. Mm. God. There was one more thing missing, and that was pride. Mm. And uh, the first time I get rebuked from elders, there was a battle inside of my flesh. I didn't want to believe I was that guy they were telling me I was, right? Mm. Yeah. And so the old man was washed away, but my old life was still coming back, trying coming back to me. Mm. So this was my fate to prove God that I really want to deny myself. This is where come the to play the fact that Jesus said, deny yourself daily and pick up your cross. So mm -hmm. he's given us life. He's given us everything, forgiveness. He died for us, but now is our turn to prove to him that we really want to follow them. You know, and yeah. as soon as I denied myself, it took me a month or two, but I, I went back to the elders. I asked forgiveness. As soon as I did that, the Lord led me to fast for 23 days. I could hear this number 23, 23 every day. I didn't know what it was. Then a friend of mine called me and she tells me, the Lord wanted you to fast. I was driving. I started crying and trembling while I'm driving. He said, all right, I'll call you later. Uh, uh. All right. So when you wanted me to fast, he told me exactly the day and the month, mm. 11 November. I started fasting and I realized it was 11, 11 when I started. Mm. And I had the 23 in my mind, but my friend told me 40. And my fast was, Lord, I want to hear your voice. Mm. I want to hear your voice. That's why I'm fasting. So two days passed by, one week passed by, two weeks passed by, headaches, all of these symptoms. Uh, three weeks passed by, four weeks passed mm. by. It's like, and I don't hear his voice. It's the last day today, right? 23rd day. And I start listening. This voice start coming to my head, 240. And I had the vision of me going around saying to people, hey, I'm doing 40 like Jesus. <laughs> Uh, I'm calling my mom, hey, I'm doing 40 like Jesus. Mm. That was the pride. Yeah. Yeah. The exact same pride that the, my friend was telling me I had. But now the enemy is trying to tempt me with the same pride. But now I see mm -hmm. because I'm fasting and my flesh is dying and my spirit is stronger. Mm -hmm. And I can see that pride. And I said, all right, Lord, you told me 23. I'm going to stop fasting right now. I'm sharing a communion. I thank you. Even if you didn't speak to me, I still love you. Mm. I, I share the communion and I hear, well done. Mm. Mm. And I was just boiling on, crying like a baby, well mm. done. I heard this voice and I realized that if I did 40, that was giving me pride back because yeah. I'm going to obey his voice, not yeah. the Satan, not the pride voice. Mm -hmm. After a week, I realized I had no pain anymore. Wow. I was like, what? I, I was sleeping and mm. I couldn't do several movements, but now I can sleep and say, what just happened? Mm. So he healed me while I was fasting. Wow. I didn't even realize that. Wow. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And because wow. I obeyed his voice, since that day I uh, I cast the demons out and they are not going out after 20 minutes. They go out after a minute. Mm. Mm. Um, I can hear him better. I can. I have a word of knowledge for people when I meet them. It's mm. like, it is true what John said, something very interesting. He said, uh, I'm going to get weaker, you're going to get stronger. Amen, amen. So when we fa uh, Jesus said, when you fast, you know, when we fast, uh, our body is getting weaker, our flesh is getting weaker, and is trying to still control in us. But uh, w uh, if we 
if we finish the mission that God assigned us, like fasting for 40 days, whatever they tells you, mm-hmm. something is happening. Mm-hmm. The, our body is giving up. We say, okay, I surrender. And our spirit start getting stronger. Mm. Amen. It's kind of like when we see people in the hospital, they are terminal, cancer or whatever. They are more spiritual than any of us because they are closer to God. Exactly. Yeah. Their flesh is dying. Exactly. You know, that's why they have vision and dreams and and this is what happens when we fast. We are we want to get closer to God. We we want to deny ourselves and we want to give more room for him to feel ourselves so we can use us as a vessel. Yeah. Before we end, though, Nico, do you want to pray for our listeners and for those people who are maybe struggling? Sure. Awesome. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm asking you, Father God, to shine a light ahead of all of the people who are lost. Mm-hmm. The lost sheep that Jesus said, he was leaving the 99 to go and find the lost sheep. I'm sure there is a lost sheep right mm-hmm. here watching this. I'm praying that you feel the light and the power of God. I pray that you feel the love of God up in you. I pray that the, you pour your Holy Spirit on Him, Father God. And I pray that you hide them under the shadow of your wings. Also, I want to pray for the person with the back pain. The Lord is telling me that there is someone with the back pain. I command all the pain to leave you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, Heavenly Father. I'm asking you to hide everyone under the shadow of your wings and to give a revelation tonight to all the people who are watching this video. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Nico. Thank you for joining us. And we'll have all of your YouTube links and ways that can contact you and support you down below. So everyone, make sure to check that out. But again, thank you so much for joining us, Nico. Thank you so much. I just want to... Thank you for your patience. I learned a lot from you because you have lots of patience and I know how difficult listening is. So you have a great gift well, because you. listening is better than talking. You well, know? So you, you have lots of wisdom and the Lord is using you in a powerful way. Well, the Lord way. is also humbling me because if you guys, the camera wasn't on me sometimes because I was just coughing over there <laughs> and I'm a talker, but because God's allowing this, he's humbling me because I usually, I need to learn to be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to become angry yeah. so i'm learning that so yeah it's amazing God. how he uses these weaknesses and like you were saying back pain if you didn't have it you might have gone right back you know exactly so he uses mm-hmm. these things and to refine us. even when they were like god this is so bad like how? but he's able to work Amen. and use it for his glory Ro- so that's romans 8 28 you were talking yeah. together yeah. but Thank you. Uh, so our mission is I just met you and I feel I know you from thousands of years because we have the same spirit. Exactly. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us on Instagram and see our behind the scenes at Calvary Conversations. Also, make sure to check out our merch in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless. Thank you.